I've begun working on my tongue box here, and I'm, I found a, someone else who had uh, incorporated the um, hurricane hatch into their lid on how it opens up, and I liked that and thought it was a good look. Um, so I'm trying to figure out how to do it now. Uh, don't really know what I'm doing, but um, from here to here is 34 and a half inches. So what I've done is I've transposed this over to here. So what I've done here is um, I measured out 34 and a half inches to here on the base. And then I came up from the bottom here, 32 inches. Because that's how high I want my box to be is 32 inches high up well, on my teardrop. So then I came and I traced along my template here and this is the template that we built in the very first video so this comes here and now that should when I get done building this fit up snug and have a nice line against the exterior of my teardrop so um, now I'm gonna work on how I want the lid the, the uh, hatch lid to work there and then also I'm gonna to have to build um, I want this to open up so I can put stuff in this way. So as um, soon as I figure out how to do all that, I'll take some more video. I think I pretty well got how I want my tongue box laid out. Um, this is the line that we drew out earlier with the template, and that'll go against the teardrop. And then up here is um, the opening, so this is going to open up like so and at first I, I had made this three inches um, to match the hatch that we cut out but uh, three inches on this on this small of a box just looked too big so I, I knocked it down to two inches which is a little bit more standard uh, hatch size opening anyway um, but what I did on that is so for this curve right here I just got me a CD and drew it down like that then I came out here uh, to this this curve, and this seemed to be about the right size radius for that. And then on this one, I just I, I looked around for a couple things, and um, that seemed to work for that radius. And then so this will come down here, and then this will open up, and um, I'm going to have this shelved off, so there'll be a shelf that'll go right here. And then in here in this compartment where I can open up and get to all my electronic stuff, um, solar panel charger, um, battery cutoff switch, etc. Down here on this end, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to have a door that starts from here and goes down to here, and then that's going to flip open. That way I can put stuff in from the front. Um, I'll, I'll start building that once I actually get all this cut out. So I'm going to get started on cutting this out and uh, show you what it looks like when I get done. Yesterday I made the template for my tongue box and um, I had cut the radius out to what this is here. I put it up on the trailer on the tongue there, stood back and looked at it and I, just, I did, it did not like the radius. I'll throw a picture up of it. So what I ended up coming back and doing is making this uh, a little bit bigger of a radius. And so I got a five gallon bucket, made that curve, got me a smaller bucket here, and made that inside curve. So now I am going to uh, cut that out and then throw that back on the trailer and see if I like that a little bit better. Um, should go a little bit more with the flow of the trailer, should look better. So I'll show you when it's done. I started cutting the lid for my tongue box here and the same thing I did with the hatch. I'm using my router with the universal base on it there. So I won't get too much into that, just thought I'd show you real quick what that looks like and all I have to do now is cut um, this here and then right up here. And then that'll be my template for the rest of, uh, the rest of my boards that I got. What I'm working on now is building the stick frame for the tongue box 
uh, walls. So um, just taking these, next step will be to glue these and staple them down and then take one of the other boards, put it on top of here, glue and staple it, and then uh, let that set up and then I'm going to take a router around the edges of it to uh, get all those nice and neat. So um, that's what I'm working on right now and I'll show you when I get to that point. While I'm letting this glue set up over here on this, I decided to start working on my lid pieces. And I was going to, I thought about doing a stick frame real quick, but that's just a lot of, you know, that's just a lot of cutting and getting these and everything. So what I think I decided to do was just go ahead and grab this piece that I cut my door out of and take it like so, trace this around, and then all I have to do now is cut it out and then take my router and get my bearing bit, flush that up, and then I should have that piece where I could mate these two together. So uh, that's what I'm going to work on now. I've got this piece cut out here and now I'll just put this on here like so and I'll router around it and that'll make that nice and flush and that'll also give us a good strong uh, lid that shouldn't that shouldn't uh, have any spring back to it. So um, I'll get to putting these together. I've got my side panels um, all sanded up, got the glue off of them and everything all the way around and also on my lid piece. So now I'm going to move on to starting to put the box together and I'll show you that as I go along here. I have decided to fiberglass these before I start putting it together. Um, I just figured it would be easier to do them while they're nice and flat as opposed to putting the box together and then trying to do these vertically over here and then also for this on the bottom side I'd have to flip it over and deal with it so I just kind of thought it'd be easier to do now so uh, I'll get started on fiberglass in this. Okay, I'm going to start putting my tongue box together and kind of the plan is is to um, get the epoxy and resin and this is a filler. Um, I'll throw the link up to this. It's, it helps with the bonding. Um, I'm going to put this together. So what we're going to do is I've gotten this fiberglass and sand it down. So I'm going to put this on here like this and then I'm going to put that epoxy with the filler down here and then take our bar clamp put it on there like that so that's the plan on getting this thing put together and set up um, I also have put pocket holes on the inside here and so that will help secure it down throw some screws in it but um, I'll get started on it and uh, show you when I get kind of everything set up all right, I have uh, my tongue box setting up here now. And um, what I did is, first thing I did was I put the epoxy down there. And then I came around to the side and I put this clamp right here on so it would stay upright. Then I came back around, put my pocket holes in went to the other side and put that one up and then I came in and put this piece up here um, this is actually the where my um, seal is going to be actually on the on the lid and then I put that pole clamp in right there and also uh, I didn't secure the one in the back back there I just put it in and then and then clamped it down so that should make these vertical since that is the length that I needed on those cross members there. So that's what it looks like and I will let this sit up and get started on something else while this, while this sits here. I thought I'd take a second to show you where I'm at on my tongue box. I threw this bending plywood up on the back here. I still need to trim it up but I just threw some glue on it and then threw some staples down it. And then on the inside here on this top part this is where I'm going to put a quarter inch shelf and I made some cleats for it so this will go in there like that 
and that'll house all of my electronics. And then I have this door here that's going to go on this bottom part if I want to put my generator and stuff like that, some bigger items down there. But that's where I'm at on this so far, and I will show you more as I go. This is where I'm at on my tongue box. I have all my cleats done now, and this is a piece of quarter inch plywood. It'll fit in here like this to make my shelf. And then up here on the top, I'm going to have my PD4045 power converter along with my inverter and a, a solar panel processor over here. And uh, this will have a lid and this is going to house all my electronics. So I also have some, some other things I'm going to throw in here. And then down here, I'm about to work on my uh, door that's going to swing open so I can put bigger items. And I'll show you that where I'm at over here. For the door in the front of the tone box, I pretty much just did like I had done previously in other videos. Just cut this out and then this will go in here like this. I'm back to working on the tongue box and I threw a couple of braces on the bottom down here so when I slide equipment in that gives it a, a brace so it doesn't knock through the back of my plywood. And so now I am getting started on the lid hatch here and it's pretty much going to be the same as how I'm going to do my galley hatch. So this is going to be good practice and I will uh, show you something up here on top. Uh, let me get set up. I've got my spar installed and I also added this additional brace here and then I got to thinking about what I wanted to do and I wanted to make this look a little bit cleaner since I'm going to have all my electronics uh, stored up here. So I'm going to kind of frame this in. I'm going to put this down here on the bottom and then I'm going to frame that in like that. So this will sit in here, quarter inch piece of plywood, and then I'll go all the way across. And that'll make that look a lot better, um, and I'll be able to mount stuff directly to this board here. And then also, if I have any uh, excess wire that I want to put in, I can put it behind here. If I need to do any maintenance on my electronics, I can pull that out, and it's easily, uh, easily enough to get to. So that's what I'm going to do now, and I will finish this up, and I'll show you when I'm done. I've got this top part framed out now and for the bottom part of the framing I just stapled it from underneath and then I pocket screwed all the interior part of the frames. I did throw in a little piece of quarter inch plywood on this brace here just because it has a bit of a curvature and so I wanted it to, to be able to touch this brace. There is a little bit of a gap down here on the, on the bottom part of it but I'm not worried about it. This is ready to pretty much get the quarter inch piece of plywood put on it to face it off and like I said earlier, I do have all this gap in here to run wires and everything within this now. So I'll get started on that and I'll show you when that's completed. Okay, now that I have the top part framed in and everything, I'm ready to move on to the lid hatch. And as I said previously, this is going to be made the exact same way that we're going to do the galley hatch on the teardrop. So this will be good practice. That way, hopefully by the time I get to the galley, I know what I'm doing. Um, so what we're going to do is the first step is we're going to take this eighth inch piece of luon here and we're going to make a template out of it. We're going to make several templates throughout this process so um, this is the first one and pretty much essentially what we're going to do is take the galley hatch part that I cut out previously and we're going to put that back on there and now we're going to trace out around the entire outside edge of this to get our first template. And I'll do that, and I'll get it cut, and I'll show you what step we're going to take next. Okay, I got all this traced out now, and I'm just going to take the jigsaw and cut just, just above the line, and then I'm going to take my sander and sand down to my line. That way I get a nice uh, uniform cut. Okay, I've got this first template cut, and it goes in here, just like that. Now I need to make one more of these for the other side, and then I need to transfer this over to a piece of half inch plywood. And I'll do all that and I'll set it up and I'll show you. So we now have both of our half inch and eight of an inch templates cut to the same. And now we're ready to move on to the next step and I'll show you that when I get set up. Our next step is to take the eighth inch piece of plywood, put it back up here. We're just gonna get a pencil, trace around this, and then cut this part off and then take our router with our bearing bit and flush cut this. And I'll show you the steps when we go, when we go through that.
All right, now we take our router with our bearing bit and we set the, the bearing to right along the outside edge of this so it cuts this eighth inch piece of plywood flush. All right, I'm ready to move on to the next step. I just got done cutting this half inch piece of glue on on the sides that we just flushed up with the router. And we're gonna move on to the half inch piece of plywood. And so we wanna put this down here and clamp it down. And we wanna cut along this edge of the template. But what we want is a half inch, I got a line right here, this is a half inch. We want a half inch lip with a quarter inch cut on this side. And this will create the lip that eventually our seal will ride on. And how we're gonna achieve this is I have my bushing on my router here that I turned upside down and I have a quarter inch up cut bit in it. And what that does is that gives me a half inch from the edge of this bit out here where this bushing is gonna ride along the template. That gives me a half inch and this is a quarter inch up cut bit and that's gonna give you my quarter inch cut. So that's what I'm about to do now and hopefully everything works out and it looks nice when it's done. Okay, just got done making that cut. Here is our half inch offset. And then we're gonna keep this piece right here because this is gonna be used as a template when we make the upper part of our, our hatch, our lid that actually opens, we're gonna use this. So I'll move on to our next step. This is the piece that we cut off the half inch. And what I did was, I didn't take any video, but what I did is I took some three quarter inch piece of plywood and I, I made these the same. And then Eventually, I'll show you what we're going to do with these, but real quick, I'm going to take you back over to the tongue box and review where we're at so far. I wanted to show you this up on the sidewall, and what I have going on here is I have the outside piece for the hatch, the three-quarter inch piece of plywood that we cut, and then the seal, and the seal will attach to this piece of three-quarter inch plywood like on this inside here. And then we have the half inch offset piece that we cut off and also we have the, the eighth inch spacer in between here too. So eventually what we're gonna do is we're going to take this three quarter inch piece and it's going to attach to this outside rib. And so when you open up your hatch, all of this moves at one time and then when you set it down, it actually seals against this half inch piece. Now for this inside, what we need to do is uh, put in on a gusset. And what this gusset does is it helps keep this hatch from wanting to bend back since it's kind of curved for extra support. And then it also hides your seal and uh, also helps against water intrusion. So I need to make a template. I made this one a little bit short on accident, uh, so I need, as you can tell, it came up a little bit short, so I need to make another one, because it needs to be for the entire outside outside portion. And then also, uh, when I go to make that, I'm probably gonna cut it down a little bit to go a little bit with the curve. And I'm doing that for a couple reasons. Uh, one would be for, uh, I have some solar panel uh, charging, or you know, on the other side, I'm gonna have my, my uh, hook up for shore power and everything. So depending on where I put these at, I need to watch out where this gusset is actually going to come down and hit. It's the same thing for if you were doing your galley hatch in the rear. If you had your cabinet shelves like this and they were in here like this, you would need to make sure you cut out your gusset around your cabinet shelves. That way when you open and close your door, you're not hitting that. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to move on to making a template for this gusset and then when I make this gusset it's going to be made out of half inch piece of plywood. So I'll move on to that and I'll show you when we're when we're ready for that. I'm working on my template and this is the exterior part of it there so then I traced out that line there so I would know the reference and then I came back and I traced it one more time and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out this area and that'll give me just a little bit more room 
if I have anything that I want to put through the sidewall, this will be exposed now. So I'm going to do that and then move on to actually cutting out the half inch gusset. I got my half inch gusset made up there and I changed it up a little bit. I made it kind of rounded on the, on the ends just to make it look a little bit better. And now let me set up over here and I'll kind of show you what we need to do next. So what I'll need to do next is take my outside piece here and my three quarter inch piece and I'll have to glue it together and screw them. And I have a, it's not, they're not perfect. There's a little bit off. We'll have to, once I get them mated together, I'll have to sand it down. And that goes with the same for the, for the gusset, for the inside here. Um, I'll have to get all three of them eventually mated together and then I'll sand them all down. That way I know they're all exactly uh, the same. Because when I go to put on the plywood for the, for the outside there, when this needs to bend around, this needs to be all nice and flush and that way it has a good mounting surface to it. So I will get started on mounting all these pieces together. I got both of these gussets in place and you can see there that I have a spacer and then I got those clamped in. Also the same thing over here. I put some wood on there uh, along with the clamps that way they would stay flush with the exterior wall. I also put some spacers in to keep my eighth inch gap all the way around there. And then the last thing that I did, I'll show you, is I put um, where the lid is gonna go on. This is a piece of the, the bending plywood that's eventually gonna be the, the, the outside. I put this on here and measured that way I knew that the piece of plywood would be flush with with this exterior wall. So when this all closes up, it'll be a nice clean front look of it. So right now I'm about to actually start putting the spars in that go across and I'll show you that. I've got my spars set up in the place where I want them out and what I did is I put them in there and then I drew around them. I'll show you that right there. Uh, you can see the, the, the marking. That way when I go to take it over to the workbench and then screw it together, I know exactly where I want to put them. Uh, there's a couple things I'll show you real quick. Uh, just you might want to might want to do. Um, here is a piece of quarter inch plywood I use as a spacer. That way when this sits down, I have this, this seal that's going to go down here. That gives it room to compress. And then also up here, I got some spacers on each side. Um, that's just to help give it a little bit of room off so when it opens and closes, there's a little bit of a space there. So now, like I said, all I gotta do is take this over to the workbench and screw it all together. I've got the lid put together now. And as you can see here, I have countersunk all the screws on the side pieces. And now I need to take it back over to the uh, tongue box here and do a test fit. So I'm about to test fit this in and I got my countersunk screws that way this when it goes down in here like that rides like that and then eventually what I'm about to do next is take my exterior piece and this will mount to this. So that's what I got to do next and then all this all this of course will open up as one hatch. But I also wanted to show you real quick. I traced out my gussets here on the inside along right here. That way I know when I go to put my shore power in and my solar power charging and everything, I know exactly where I can put my boxes and where my gusset's gonna be at. So I'll move on to mating this together. We got everything clamped in place. And now I am going to drill my holes for where my screws are going to go in. I've put glue on this external piece and now it's ready to be installed to the lid. And I just screw it up now. I 
got this external piece mounted to my hatch now and this is how the seal will lay in there now. I have the interior side clamped up. I'll let that sit up for 24 hours and then tomorrow I will start with the exterior side. On this exterior what I've decided to do is clamp this down and get this long flat side first. I'm going to throw some glue on here, put this up, clamp it down and staple it and then start working my way, way around the, the curved part. I've added this piece of quarter inch to the top here just so it matches the hatch lid. Um, that way it meets nice and flush. And right now I am marking out my hurricane hinge that I want to put on here. And let me set up and I'll show you there. You can see the marks I've made on my hurricane hinge. And I need to cut this piece out and then this piece out so this can sit flush against this back wall. And then you also notice I have about a half inch overhang. Um, they say on these to leave about a half inch to a quarter of an inch overhang on the sides. That way when water runs out, it, it drips down off the hinge instead of going down the side of your, of your teardrop. So that's what I'm about to do next. I'm about to cut these out. So I'm set up to cut this notch out and I'm going to use the Dremel to get this close cut up against the edge and then finish it off with the hacksaw for the sides here. All right, I forgot that I don't need this little piece right here, so I'm just gonna knock that off. I've got this first piece done, and you can see now how this will fit down in there, like so. And now that'll, that'll lift like that. So for right now, that pretty much finishes up my tongue box. I'm gonna wait and attach the lid and the hatch until I get done with all my fiberglassing, which I'm going to do most of that towards the end of the project, so that'll be one of the last things that I do. Um, I will need to round over, uh, router bit the, the ends and the corners to give that a nice smooth surface for when I go to fiberglass it. I'm going to paint the inside and bed liner spray it, but all that's going to be towards the end. So up next is starting to do the wiring for this and how I'm going to get all the wiring uh, from the teardrop into the front of this tongue box here.